What's up guys, my name is Carl and welcome to Tech Hunter. So today I'm looking at a nine year old graphics card from Nvidia and I'm curious to see if it's still functional in 2017. It was released in July 2008, I believe, and it was still producing during 2009. This is quite a revolutionary graphics card in a way. A lot of people really appreciated this and this is the 9800 GTX. I had the 9600 GT back in 2008 when these came out. I couldn't afford the 9800, I was poor back then and I'm still poor now. This graphics card is hopefully going to still prove pretty pretty useful. We should be able to play some decent games at decent settings I think, so like your Counter-Strike, your Overwatch, your games like that will hopefully play reasonably well on this card. I'll be playing it on my PC so I've got 16 gigs of RAM, I've got a 6700K overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz and we should be able to see some fairly respectable frame rate. Obviously I will have to do it on a 1080p monitor because the monitor behind me will not function with a DVI, it's got a DisplayPort only monitor there. We've got two DVI ports and even a PS2 port, look at that. So we've got two DVI ports, so we're going to have to put them into one of the monitors on the right or the left, or I'll find another monitor from somewhere and we'll use that one. So having a look at the card, it's clearly not what you'd expect compared to the cards you see today. There's a lot more on show. The heatsink is on show, there's no protective plastic shrouds. You've got a fan cable here, so you can plug it straight into the motherboard to make your fan spin. It doesn't spin with just the usual power connectors. So this is some pretty old school technology but hopefully it will still be efficient for today's pretty reasonable demands. So let's open up some games and see how we get on. So first up we have Counter-Strike Go. Obviously we're running at 1080p with high settings which is fairly good for a game, for a graphics card story that came out nearly 10 years ago. Obviously you could get well above 60 FPS fairly consistently if you was willing to drop the settings down to say medium or even low. A lot of people like to play CSGO with low settings anyway, just keep themselves on that higher FPS count so they don't feel like they're at a disadvantage compared to other gamers. Next up we have Rocket League. Rocket League was a difficult one because you had a lot of fairly consistent and solid frames around the 60 FPS mark, kind of jumping up to the 70s as well. Then you'd get the odd really kind of harsh stutter where it may jump down to even say say 20 or 30 FPS, which is fairly playable, but now and then it's just a bit of a pain in the ass. It probably happens about one or tw once or twice every single match. For the third game, I've chosen Dishonored. This is an older game, it came out in 2013, again, sorry, 2012, but we managed to play this at 1080p with the highest settings possible. We had FXAA on, we averaged FPS at around 70, which I think is pretty decent. In the combat settings and the fighting scenes, we dropped down to say mid 50s to the 60s, but your general exploration, walking around, they still managed to maintain quite a respectable frame rate. Up next we have Skyrim. We've got 1080p medium settings for this. We obviously, the annoying thing with Skyrim is it has the V-Sync constantly locked and if you switch that off, it can cause some issues. I've got a few different modes here. I've got us during combat in the town, we're getting around 40 to 50 FPS, which is still fairly playable and respectable. When you go outside and you start exploring say smaller areas like caves or quite wide open areas where it doesn't really have to render as much, it's kind of the same stuff, you get that V-Sync locked to 60 and you could possibly even push this higher than medium if you're willing to take a hit in the busier areas. Finally we have Batman Arkham Origins. This is a fairly good game, it's released in 2013 with settings at 1080p and medium. We averaged some good FPS, getting around the 60s and the 70s quite easily, even during the fighting and combat scenes. Obviously, if you're willing to sacrifice a few frames, you could even bump this up to maybe high or even just switch AA on just to try and improve things a little bit. But this game played flawlessly and honestly really well. I had no issues with this, no drop frames, nothing too obvious or even nothing painful to game on. Overall, 
I'm pretty impressed with what we've seen with the 9800 GTX. Right, so now you've seen what the 9800 GTX can do with today's games, what do you guys think? For a 9 year old card, I think it did pretty well considering how things have come along and how much games have improved and how much more powerful PCs are compared to back in the day. PCs nowadays, well consumer PCs, are running with especially with the Ryzen processors up to 8 cores as your standard day-to-day -day processor. We've got high core clock rates on the new Kaby Lake stuff, we're hitting up to 5 GHz as overclock, it's fairly easy and standard to do. PC hardware has evolved a lot and I've been quite impressed with the 9800 GTX. I think it's done pretty well considering. What do you guys think? Is this something that you could consider? Around $20 or £20? You could pick one of these up. You could probably get one even cheaper. You could probably get one for free if somebody doesn't really know what it is. It's a fairly decent card if you try and build a really tight budget PC. Obviously you couple it with something a bit more modern like a, say an i3 if you're trying to be budget friendly or even like an old Core 2 Quad. You should be able to get some respectable frame rates in today's modern titles. Anyway guys, my name is Carl and I'll see you in the next one.